Hi, I'm John Paul and a really warm welcome back to my channel. And today I'm continuing in um, uh, with conversations with therapists, in this case, a training therapist, actually, about uh, the career, uh, tr training as a therapist, retraining, and also then talking about um, what life is like at the moment and plans for the future as well. So I'm absolutely delighted to have on today, Volker Baluda. Um, thank you for coming on, Volker. Yeah, thanks for having me, John Paul. Um, you sent me a bio, so I'll just read out yeah. the bio just to give a bit of background, and then I know you'll talk through uh, some of that too. Um, but Volker has over 20 years' experience in sales and predominantly works as a sales consultant and sales coach. Having gone through multiple redundancies, Volker reinvented himself more than once, uh, balances his family with work, maintaining a 5 a.m. routine, which includes meditation and journaling for over 10 years without burning out. Uh, he's built his own brand and business as he went self-employed about five years ago. Uh, Volker has been an avid podcaster, interviewing people about success principles. He wrote a best-selling book on the back of it, uh, now runs a podcast for middle-aged men called Man Up, Man Down, which I was on a month or two ago, actually. Yeah. Uh, I will we'll put details of that under the podcast, a, a link to your podcast. Uh, with the purpose to help as many people as possible to master life and live the life they want to be living. Uh, Volker is a qualified master practitioner in neuro-linguistic programming. Uh, he's a mindfulness trainer and also a member of the Association of Coaching and is currently, as I said, uh, finishing or on an integrative psychotherapy training yep. education, which is accredited by UKCP. So lots there, yeah. Volker. Thank you so yeah. much, as I say, for coming on. Um, and where we normally start is just looking at your journey up to retraining. As you yeah. know, there's uh, a number of people that watch the videos who are thinking about retraining as a therapist or on that process themselves. So can you just give us some background and tell us about the journey and why you decided to retrain? Yeah, sure. So so thanks again for, for having me. And I hope I can add some value if I say share, share my story, how how I get to, got to this point. Mm -hmm. So um, if I say it, it depends how how far we want to go in the past, but uh, I always had an interest, you know, if I say from, from early university days, actually, um, in, in psychology and, you know, if I say how, how people work and, and productivity, got introduced to NLP, um, you know, as, as you mentioned, I did my master practitioner um, now 20 years ago, actually, so so, so okay. quite some, some time. And we, we recently, on, on my psychotherapy course, we did the um, NLP weekend, and I'm like, yeah, I actually, a lot of these things still still stuck you know they're, they're, they're part of my toolbox mm -hmm. um and uh, i you know if, if i say throughout uni i, I kind of was thinking of, of changing you know should i change to a psychology degree but ended up doing a an engineering degree and then did, did my mba and um if i say for for whatever reasons ended up in sales and i I, I like to tell the story that my my grandmother, at, if I say at some point um, late late in her life, said, "You know, Volker, I'm, I'm not worried about you. You always get on with people." She said, "Right." So okay. I've always been a, a you know, I don't want to say people pleaser, but you know, a people person. I always, you know, love mm -hmm. love talking to people, helping people, and that was kind of like a theme, you know, throughout. But what what I've done is, you know, I just been been for a sales career, had had a great sales career, enjoyed it and um, set myself up as a coach in 2019. So started, you know, doing, doing some leadership and executive coaching and there will be more coming and we got to repositioning next year in that direction. And then over the last, if I say five years, I, I you know, I do a lot of sales consulting, a lot of sales coaching. Um, and uh, I came across the company I was working with, um, you know, they, they're using psychoanalysis, um, mm -hmm. essentially for, for advertising. And um, one one of the founders had done the course I'm I'm doing now, and and I thought oh, I I didn't actually know these courses exist, quite frankly, right? So I didn't know you could you know do a part time course or weekend course in my case over a period of if I say the minimum is four, the maximum of seven years right. um, to become an integrated um, or integrative psychotherapist. And I thought like this this is interesting. So I wanna, you know, I wanna find out more. And um I went on the website of the um NCHP, so the National College of, of Hypno Psychotherapy. I think that's the official abbreviation, uh, which are part of the UKCP, um, mm -hmm. as you just mentioned. And um I I couldn't I couldn't find a contact button, I could only find an apply button. So I'm like, let me just apply, let's see what happens. Right. right? No um, choice. Yeah, exactly. So I'm like <laughs> 
you know, what's, what's the worst going to happen? You know, I, I'm going to fail the application and, you know, I'm not going to do it. Or I have a chat and I, and I pass the application and I'm going to do it um, if I want to do it. And uh, so, so I spoke to um, um, uh, Stuart, who, who runs the NCHP, and, um, as, yeah, if I say lo long story short, we, we got along very well. And um, similar to you, he has the background in legal. Um, so he was talking about, you know, how he transitioned and, and I'm like, this, okay. this is something I really want to do. And, you know, the, the workload seems manageable. So we, we have a weekend every four weeks, um, lots of coursework in between. So the last, last few weeks have been really busy with coursework, I have to admit. Um, but everything working out, I will be, um, a, a qualified hypnotherapist by hopefully next May. So, so next summer. Um, which then means I can start practicing whilst it's so start earning money as well, whilst I then continue right. for say of a maximum or two maximum of seven years in total, um, you know, in, in terms of being a, a integrative or hypnotherapist. It's, it's something I'm still learning, right? What, what's a counselor? What's an integrated, integrated mm -hmm. psychotherapist? You know, there's, there's so many different terms I'm, I'm still learning. Um, so that's, that's my journey. So I, I, I spoke to, to Stuart and I, you know, I liked the program and I'm like, this is something I, I would really like to do. Um, but then I want to be honest, I don't know what I want to do with it in the long term. So, you know, because I, I want to push more of my coaching business next year. So, so in individual coaching and leadership coaching, and I think there will be elements I can take from the hypnotherapy around stress reduction and anxiety. Um, to, to bring that, you know, potentially to executives and, and potentially into the corporate world. But then I'm really interested, and, and you mentioned my podcast, to work with middle-aged men. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm middle-aged, which, you know, is why, why I launched Didn't the you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, um, you know, you, you get to the stage in your life where you, where you review things, right? And I think that was another trigger for me to, to say, okay, what, what else do I want to do in life? Do I just want to continue with my career, you know, or... Do I want to have a different career? And, and, and the great thing is it gives me the option, right, to potentially become a full-time time therapist. Mm -hmm. So that was Amazing. Lots, lots of things there. Okay. Uh, from a, a number of people who uh, contact do talk about doing the training, balancing having an income and, and also doing the training and what yeah. that's like. And um, so how, what do you do at the moment then? It's a part-time training that you do, isn't it? How, yeah. So you continue to work... Yeah, on a day-to-day -day basis, doing the is it the, the coaching and consulting work? Yeah. So, so, okay. so, so, I still work as a consultant coach. Um, do that if I say five, five days, seven days a week, right? Right. <laughs> Depending. Um, but I'm working for myself, so I'm, I have flexibility in terms of which which hours I work. Um, which you know, it, it 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 just helps me essentially to to balance it with the workload. So we recently done done an ethics paper, which I think was about twelve thousand words or something like that. Uh, so quite quite a hefty piece of work, um, and I, I just spend a lot of weekends on it. Um, but then early mornings as well. You mentioned I do a five a.m. routine, so I normally go to the gym, but I skipped the gym a couple of times and just 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 got on with it. Or you know mm -hmm. I might not have client meetings in the afternoon, and you know you just do two hours here, two hours there. But it is a lot of work, right? So if you if you have family and if you have a full time job, then yeah. you know it's 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 balancing it. But the good thing is that they essentially. The, the way uh, my college works, we, we, we're under no pressure to finish it within a certain time period. So right. that say any assignment is, is due, you know, in, in seven years. So I could could leave that paper until, I don't know, next year. But obviously I'm very keen on, you know, if I say I'm very self-driven, so I'm very keen to, to, to get the qualification sooner rather than later to start sure. figuring out what I can do with it. Mm. So lots of working with people in various guises, I suppose the therapy yeah. training as well. Uh, lot, it brings up lots of things, doesn't it? So it sounds like uh, that I, I did a um, spoke to, spoke to another therapist, Lula Bentz, on on this series, and she was yeah. talking about uh, one of the most important things from a therapist's point of view is to be is to be able to regulate themselves, kind of thing. And a, a number of things you're talking about mindfulness, yeah. uh, exercise. Um, uh, it's a lot about keeping yourself in that kind of balanced state, which I guess must be important from the point of view of working with coaching clients, but also as well yeah. as the training too, isn't it? I've talked about that in other in other videos as well. And then, of course, working with therapy clients too, the importance of that. So that's yeah. sort of built into your life anyway, it seems. 
It, I'm, I'm trying to, right? I mean, like, like, like with everyone, right? We, we're all juggling a lot of balls in our lives, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm working across six or seven different clients, which, you know, for some seems like a lot, but, you know, it depends on how many touch points you have with the client. And, you know, sure. um, so, so it works quite well for me. But what, what you just mentioned, self-care, right? I think self-care is so important. Um, so you, you mentioned mindfulness. So I'm, you know, I've been, you know, meditating for, I don't know, 15 years or so. And, you know, and if, if I say I started this 5 a.m. routine or originally because all the successful people do a 5 a.m. routine and right. I thought like, why, why don't I try it out? But obviously there's, there's no causation, right? That, that if you get up early, you're also going to be successful, right? Mm -hmm. But what, what, what it was for me is, is trying it out. And then I realized, so actually, obviously my, my, my kids are a bit older now, but at the time they were quite young. I could actually exercise and, and, you know, get meditation practice in and, and, and my journaling and, and anything else I want to do for myself before mm -hmm. everyone else gets up, right? Before the day gets too busy. Because I always found that if you leave it to the end of the day, you know, whether that's going to the gym or, or meditation, you're, you're too tired, you know, you can't be bothered, you know, you had a busy day and or you have to finish off a project. And uh, so, so it works for me. And I'm, I'm, I'm always very, you know, adamant about saying, you know, my, my 5 a.m. might be someone else's 10 a.m., right? We all mm. have different cycles. And, and important to, to your point of self-care um, is, is to get enough sleep, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I need at least seven hours. You know, I had, um, you know, time of recording, I was just saying, you know, I had, had a few hours less last night because of, I was um, an event I was hosting and, you know, lots of thoughts afterwards. Um, and, and the same, you know, if, if you study a lot, you know, so if you study late into the night, you often, you know, process things. So you you, you need to find your balance and, and, and need to make sure you get a good quality sleep, which mm -hmm. which is very important and, and obviously which, whichever amounts you need. So this, this whole... If I say, you know, people posting on LinkedIn, right, about, you know, I work until three o'clock in the morning and I get up at five, you know, I do a thousand emails and, 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 and run a marathon before I go to work. It's all a bit BS in my opinion, right? So it, sure. it, it needs to make sense for, for your schedule. Um, so as I say, med meditation for, for me really works. Um, and, and I'm a true believer, having gone through many redundancies that with, without my meditation and, and mindfulness practice, um, you know, I, I probably would have burned out at some point, right? Or mm -hmm. would, would be in a different stage than, than I'm now. And, and I think that all comes together with, you know, and, and, and I'm sure most, most re, uh, listeners will be, will be familiar with, you know, NLP and they will be familiar with, with mindfulness and, and, and obviously interest in therapy. I think it all kind of, you know, as, as a package almost comes, comes together, how you can help yourself and then help others in life. Absolutely. And that that mix is is one that you come up with yourself, isn't it? And everybody has different levels yeah. of tolerance and sensitivity and that changes throughout life. So to change that mix, too. Um, just before we sort of come on, you mentioned the event last night. It'd be interesting yeah. to hear about the podcast and, yeah, uh, sure. and those things, too. But um, the, the that sort of combination of coaching and therapy uh, most of the people that will be listening to this channel will be thinking, because I am a therapist, I also do some coaching as well for, for yeah. people. But um, they will be focused on that career. But I just wonder, it might be interesting for people to hear your experience of the mixture between coaching and therapy and yeah. how those two work together. Uh, I say that because on my course, there are a couple of people who were coaches and then uh, started the course and finished the course and um, and now combine coaching with therapy. Yeah. And you know, if I was talking to some people at the time, maybe more senior people on the course, they'd be saying that the two don't necessarily mix. Or, uh, yeah. but really, with lots of things, isn't it? I just think we—they're they're tools, aren't they? Uh, perhaps coaching is a bit more future focused. I don't know how you would experience yeah. it. Therapy, perhaps more about understanding what might be in the way based yeah. on things that have happened in the past or not happened in the past. But, um, but if you could talk a little bit, yeah. perhaps about how they relate to each other and whether they will for you or whether you keep them separate or yeah it's it's it's, it's a good question and i if i say I, I constantly have these you know discussion in my own mind right what you mm. know how do they fit together because they are different right so if, if i say i mean the, the the challenge is anyone can call themselves a coach and i believe every, everyone can call themselves a therapy as well a therapist as well right so there's you know there's always a challenge around around that and um as, as you say, coaching is very much, you know, future focus, you know, you, you, you want to achieve a goal. And, you know, if I say similar to a football coach or, you know, or, or sports coach, you know, I, I help people to achieve things, mm -hmm. um, you know, or with, within sales coaching, I work with, with, with people in companies to either achieve a sales goal or to get better at what they're doing. 
Um, so that's that's where I see coaching, right? You, you're kind of standing on the sideline and, and cheering someone on, right? Um, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes it can be, you know, so, some of the coaching I do can be quite directive where, where I make suggestions to the coachee in terms of what, what they should or, or shouldn't do with, with, yeah. uh, without, you know, it being mandatory. Um, but I'm, I'm working through, through, through a platform. They, 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 they master like a 30 minute, you know, coaching session where you, you try to give as much as input as possible for people really to, to improve their lives. Um, whilst with, if I say a lot of private clients, it's, it's more about the, the client coming up with the answer. And that again is very similar to therapy, right? Where you, where you ideally build the client relationship with, 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 um, um, with the client to, to come up with your own answers. Right. Sure. I mean, depending which philosophy and, and, and that's what I'm still learning, right? Which, which philosophy you, you, you're looking at. Um, you know, as, as I mentioned with NLP, NLP is used for both parts, right? For, for coaching a lot, but then also for, for, for therapy, mm -hmm. right? And it is a lot about, you know, reframing things and, and looking at things differently. Um, but with, with therapy, as you say, you, you often go back in the past, which with, with coaching you don't necessarily do. And I think there will be, there will be a fine line about, you know, ex exploring things that, that happened in the past within coaching without going into therapy. Mm. But then if they are, you know, as you, say, you, you call them blockers, um, that, that you want to unblock and, and, and they might be more, if I say, you know, therapy related, then you, you have to apply therapy. So it's a fine line. Um, and, and I'm sure anyone who, who studies, um, uh, to be a therapist, right? They, they, so the dual relationship, right? It's a challenge, you know, can you have a dual relationship with someone, right? For, mm -hmm. And as I say, I just finished my ethics paper. So, so don't get me started and, and go down the road. That's an ethics paper on your training, is it? Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah it okay. is. Okay. So, uh, ethics, what, what did that cover specifically? Was that? Oh, you know, for instance, could, could you have a sexual relationship with a client, right? Okay. So then you would have a. Hopefully you said no. I'm yeah, I did say no. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> It's these challenges, you know, you have two, two relationships with someone, you know, which, which, which doesn't work. And yeah. Could you have coaching and, um, and therapy, you know, as, as, as a dual relationship? And I think it's difficult. Mm. Um, however, I think you can take elements off, off, of therapy. So, um, my, my next weekend coming up next weekend actually is, is around solution focused therapy, right? Okay. So yeah. Really looking forward to which, which is a little bit like coaching, but it goes deeper. Right. And, and it looks at different issues and, and, and challenges. And I think there, there will be elements that, that apply to both. So I, I can, for instance, envisage, and, and, and as I say, I, I'm not qualified yet, so I have to be careful what I say, that, that, that you bring, you know, particularly in the corporate world, you, you bring in these elements of hypnotherapy in from, from stress reduction or, or ego strengthening point of view or, or confidence building point of view without going, if I say, maybe too much into the, the therapeutic aspect. Whilst if, if you have a, you know, if you have a client that comes to you very much from a, from a therapeutic point of view, so I don't know, let's say with, with, with depression mm -hmm. um, or anxiety, I think this is very much therapy. This is, this is not coaching. You know, you can't coach someone out of depression, in my opinion. Um, sure. So, so I think it's, it's a bit use case related and, and yeah. depending on the relationship you have with the client, you probably want to keep, keep the two separate. So, so for instance, if I had a, had someone for sales coaching, I, I would not consider taking them on as a client for, for therapy. I don't think that that's, that's going to work. Sure. And it's interesting. It does. I mean, you mentioned ethics and boundaries there and those kind of things. I, I did a, a recorded my last video was on five things I wish I knew before yeah. I started training. And one of the things about that it, that I noticed, I mean, there are you mentioned the sort of sexual relationship. There are yeah. things that pretty much everybody. Well, I'm sure everybody would say that that's oh, not yes. OK. Um, <laughs> The, a lot of the rest of it, though, is really pers very much personality dependent. You know, of course, ethically, mm. we're not meant to do harm, but someone's perception of what harm is or otherwise, it, you know, it can yeah. be very personality dependent. I've really noticed that having been a around a lot of therapists over the years, you know, uh, examples that I use of things like corresponding with clients, that kind of thing. Um, yeah you know, how you deal with endings, uh, self-disclosure, perhaps. Pe yeah. A lot of people will disclose quite personal details. Other people will not respond at all to a to a client question. And those things, are there's no actual right or wrong answer, yeah. um, you know? So that is, uh, and I, what I was saying in that video is about just making sure that you're in the position, and that goes back to the self-care thing as well, and boundaries, to be able to make 
the best decisions that you can at the time. Because if you ask yes. other people, which is always important to do, isn't it, supervision, exactly, for example, yes. and being formed by other people's opinions, but you can get very different opinions from other people, even yep. opinions that would contradict. Because I suppose what comes up a lot in the training is we would quite like, you, could, you should do this, you shouldn't do this very clear uh, answers yeah. as to what to do. When I was in law, you know, there was a right and a wrong. That's legal, that's illegal, that's how we do this, that's how we, we don't do this. Uh, but that it is quite different. You do yeah. have to have your own sort of internal compass, again, being informed by other people, of course, but, um, but also very much informed by your personality, your own moral yeah. values. Uh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we had a case, I'm, I'm trying to remember it now, which, which we discussed in class, and it was about, um, I think, your, 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 your client, you know, kind of like cancelled the, the session or something like that, but instead asked you if you could um, give give her or him a, a lift to the hospital because her child is ill, right? Mm -hmm. And you, you're kind of overstepping, you know, the therapeutic relationship sure. there, yeah. right? But on the other hand, from a from a personal point of view, right, from a moral point of view, go like, I really want to help that person. Mm. Right, like wh where, 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 where does the boundary start? You know, where does it stop? Um, so there, there, there are lots of you know challenges, and 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 I guess that's where training comes in, right? Where you start yeah. thinking about it and and start, okay, you know, what what should I do? You know, do, do I need supervision? To your point, right? Or can can I make that decision myself and say no? You know, by by all means, right? I, I appreciate you have a problem, but it's it's not not making it your problem, right? Yeah, you know, it's about you know helping the client, but you know, you, you can't make decisions for the client, right? Sure. You know. Yeah, and it's very yeah. much an ongoing process that I think yeah. um, after fun. the training too. Um, oh, yeah. Just uh, going back to uh, yeah. a couple of things you mentioned, you mentioned the event yesterday in the podcast, also in your bio, yeah. your book. Um, yeah. Could you talk a bit about perhaps the book and then also uh, the, the, the podcast as well, which might be interesting for people, yeah, and sure. specifically the man up, man down? Yeah, sure, sure. So the... Um, so I started a podcast in, I think, 2018 um, called Stories of Success. So you still find it on, on, on YouTube or, you know, wherever okay. you listen to podcasts. And I set out to interview people, you know, who have been successful, you know. And, and the, the, the good thing was, essentially, you know, you, you define what success means, right? Mm. And the, so, so once I looked at, if I say, successful people in my industry at the time, um, I then, you know, discovered other people which are like, well, this, this is success as well, at least in my opinion, you know, or, or is it not? And, and I had these conversations with lots of different people who are, you know, also including coaches, therapists, et cetera, who, who gave me and others, you know, the listeners tips in terms of how to become successful. <laughs> and at some point I thought, you know, it would be good to write a book about it and, and actually, con you know, pr bring all these ideas together and, and, and help people to understand what success actually means. And, and the key learning and, and you you, you and the listeners probably won't be surprised is, you know, everyone wants, wants and should define success for themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for, for some that's money, although none of my guests ever admitted that, um, you okay. know, and it's, it's quite interesting. You know, a lot of people say, you know, it's not about money, but it's often about the, the purpose you have in life, right? The things you want to achieve, your, your inner values. Um, so I summarized it all in a, in a, in a, in a, in a small book, um, which became a bestseller. It's, a, it's available on BookBoon. Um, you know, that's, that's who I chose as a, as an e-publisher. And, um, I did that podcast for about four or four and a half years. And mm -hmm. during lockdown, I met my, my current co-host, David, um, who always wanted to launch a podcast. And, you know, I, I was kind of done with my old podcast and we thought, why, why don't we launch a podcast around middle-aged men? Because when, when we hit it off in lockdown, we, we, we realized we have a lot of I say, issues in common or, or common issues or challenges being midlife. So I, at the time, just, just bought the sports car. I, I got my first tattoo during lockdown. And um, <laughs> did you yeah. say you got your first tattoo? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. So what did you, um, what, what is it? Um, so, so I got, uh, I, I don't know if it, so, so I got a little, uh, I don't know if you can I see can't, that. unfortunately, there. but I see a line, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Fall, fall down seven times, get up eight times. So it's a Japanese proverb of, okay. being, you know, I literally never give up. So, so I mm -hmm. was, it was literally a shower moment a week into lockdown. I'm like, I always want to get a tattoo. I, I'm going yeah. to get that tattooed. So I got that. And on the day I decided for another one and, 
you know, over the last three and a half years, I got about 10, 12 tattoos. So, I mean, who's counting, right? <laughs> <laughs> really? <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Everything below here completely yeah. covered. <laughs> you can not see it, which means I can, I can cover it up, you know. Um, I haven't planned any face tattoos yet. You know, I don't, don't want to do Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so, so I, I sold the sports car by now, by the way, as well. So I'm, I'm, if I see, you I'm paid sport- for your tattoos, did you? <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I think everyone, if I say experiences this void a little bit different, and as, as, as you might be aware, or might not, and the listeners might not, there's a higher suicide rate for, I think, people around, or men around 42, 43 mm-hmm. years old, so I think is the average age. And then again at 70. And it's these mm-hmm. life-changing you know, stages in life where, where, where we lose, if I say focus, we, we, we might go, I don't know, to, through, through a transition where we're looking for, you know, as, as I said earlier, right, value in life, you know, what, what do I really want to do? What, you know, what, what's happening? I don't know, if the, if the kids are older, what happens with their marriage? Yeah. You know, that's still the, the situation I want to be in. So, you know, a lot of people, if I say a lot of people, you know, a few people get divorced, unfortunately, and there, there's so many life changing moments. Um, you know, redundancy is another one, right? If you take redundancy at the age of, of 40 plus, right? You go like, oh, do I actually want to go back to do what, what I've always done? Or do I want to become a therapist, right? Or do mm-hmm. I want to become a coach? So David and I started interviewing people around that. And we did a couple of um, uh, episodes o- ourselves where we looked at topics like midlife crisis and, and um, you know, um, etc. So it's, 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 you know, kids, you know, what, what, what do you do when your kids get older? Right. Sure. You know, depending when, when you started with kids, I mean, my kids are not teenagers, right? That's the challenges that brings with it. Um, you know, David talks a lot about fat Friday football, or I, I don't know what's called, but essentially, you know, fat blokes playing football, <laughs> but it's about the community, right? We, we have therapists in there about, about talk club. And what we did at the time of recording last night, we, we did an event live in, in Brighton. So I live just just north of Brighton, where where we had about twenty twenty five people, um, and and we had a panel, and you know we had a couple of sponsors, a couple of drinks, um, and 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 just you know had a live discussion around that, mm-hmm. and and um, one of the therapists who was there actually he said you know he he thinks a lot of problems men have is about, um, you know if I say being lonely, you know especially through COVID he thinks a lot of it is is post COVID still. Um, and if you, you know, if, if you're looking at, you know, AI and everything else coming, I think AI won't be able to replace therapists, right? Because p- people still need to talk to, to sure. real people, right? Mm-hmm. So, so it's a future proof profession. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, lo- lo- looking at that, the, the discussion was really, really good. Um, you know, we had someone who, who, who openly disclosed some, some challenges he had in his, his life. And, um, we talked about, you know, men, men being lost, you know, almost reinventing themselves a little bit because, you know, a lot of people in, you know, again, I don't want to stereotype, but, you know, I'm, I'm now 46. Um, you know, my, my parents are in their eighties, right? So, so they were born during the war, you know, there, there's certain, you know, if I say values that come with that, right. Things, things they picked up from their grandparents, you know, around, if I say, don't, don't waste food, for instance, or, you know, you have to have a good career, you know, you have to stay in, in one job, things that are not necessarily valid these days. And, and, you know, we, we got into lockdown once of a sudden we, we lost all our social contact, you know, mm. I say men probably more so than women. And, and once of a sudden we, we, we started thinking about what do we actually want in life? And are these rules we're living by are actually still valid? And that, that was another, if I say trigger for me, at least to, to, to look at therapy and, you know, mm. to, 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 to do more coaching. And that's why I enjoy working with middle-aged men to help them through that, that transition, right? Into into potentially new life. And mm. some people obviously always say it's 40, right? For some it's 25, for some it's 54, and, and some some never notice their midlife transition. You know, I don't want to call it a, tri- a, a crisis. But I think the common theme is that, that men just don't socialize enough, right? They, you know, they might go out with mates on a Friday night and, and, and get drunk, but they don't go out and, and talk about things. Right, mm-hmm. like like a lot of, of of women, you know, from from what I hear anyway, and from what our research suggests, they they go out and talk about things, right? Because, because in no time they're talking about their family and they talk about the, you know, their their the upbringing, their first boyfriend, you know, Louise mentioned that yesterday. Whilst but men don't, they don't open up, right? They don't show the emotions because mm-hmm. often we've been taught from an early age, you know, men don't cry, or men up, hence hence mm-hmm. the name for the for the podcast, men up, men down, right? 
and uh, mental health is is increasing for or, or mental health you know issues are increasing for for men unfortunately yeah and there it's, it's definitely a crisis if, if it's not there yet but it's if i say it's definitely in the making Mm. And I think the difficulty can be, can't it? I mean, I, m I might speak to some men who, who there's that sort of traditional protect and provide role. I, I mean, I look at things, as you may know from videos about yeah. in terms of parts of this and the protection part being more about that fear and anger, um, provide being about short term highs, but material wealth, those kind yeah. of things, more winning competition. And I think the difficulty is neither of those. I mean, you get short-term highs if the, yeah. and there is some worth and value, actually some significant outward in externally, some significant wealth and value, which seems to come from having lots of money, material status, isn't it? Uh, but actually, I think where happiness sits, good mental health, emotional well-being is more in that place of connection, which comes yeah. from intimacy, vulnerability, talking about what we feel. But I think the trouble can be, although theoretically, Somebody may come to therapy thinking, well, this is more or be encouraged to because it's more about connection and to put energy into that. The trouble is if where most of our energy is gone is into provide and protect, yeah. it is difficult to let, to to see the world in a significantly different way. It's not that it makes those wrong, provide and protect, but something needs to be added. And that might mean communication is different, boundaries are different, how we see ourselves and the world is different. And in fact... Yeah. I think some of the qualities that are necessary for providing and protecting uh, are actually, they contradict or, or conflict with connection. Yes. So if you look at winning, I suppose, which, you know, superiority, inferiority, that yep. doesn't work in a, in a connected relationship, whether that's with friends, romantic relationship, relationships with children, if we need to win in those environments. So I think it can be really difficult, actually, even if somebody comes to therapy, because mm -hmm. if I would be suggesting those qualities, which I think are more consistent with connection, so empathy, compassion, boundaries, they can in some ways can mean that somebody might earn less or feel like they are less likely to be able to protect, you know, that it's softer yeah. or weaker. You know, there are those sorts of messages that people have internally. Um, yeah, so I can see... I, you know, I think I can see where the energy needs to go for, for a, lot, a, a lot of us. Yeah. It's just that there are some quite significant obstacles in the way, not only sort of culturally, but I also think internally um, yeah. for us. So, yeah, but amazing what you're doing in that as yeah, a service no, guest on it. So we'll put a link to the podcast below and the live event. Is that going to be something that you're planning to repeat or? I mean, status today, yes. So, so we're planning another event, <laughs> hopefully early next year in London. Great. So make, make it maybe a little bit bigger and, and more accessible because, you know, obviously L London is a lot bigger than, than Brighton, right, in, in terms of people. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so hopefully we, we, we do another event and, and, and more to come because, you know, again, we, we get men out, you know, we, we're creating that community of, of men that want to talk and uh, give them an opportunity and, you know, as, as, as we always like to say, and, you know, it's, it's a bit of a sad topic, but if, if, if we can get men to talk and pre prevent one suicide, right, mm -hmm. we're already winning. So, Absolutely. You know, yeah. Which, Great. Yeah. In terms yeah. of the future, because uh, yeah. when we spoken before, you said in terms of a, like a focus on coaching potentially for middle-aged yeah. men and things. Um, yeah. How do you plan things to go in the future? What's What are your ideas? Yeah, so, so I already offer coaching um, for, you know, if I say for, for anyone, but you know, particular focus on, on middle-aged men. So, so yeah. I already do that. Um, so, so helping, you know, men and, and of course women as well, but the, the main focus is around men. I think, you know, given my experience, I think it, it makes more sense, um, you know, to, if I say, to cope with life, to p improve their life from a, from a coaching perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, so plan is to, to, to push that proposition more, um, in, in 2024. And then, as you know, as we just discussed, right, adding the the therapy bit to it as I as I go through the course and you know be qualified as a as a hypnotherapist next year. Um, so being able to to offer hypnotherapy and and, and therapy in, in in general, um, as I then you know finish the whole course over the next few years, and then I guess like like with anything else, I mean there will still be a strong focus on my sales coaching and consulting business, mm -hmm. um, because that 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 will continue, um, but. The, the beauty is when you start working for yourself, right? You can decide what what the split could be. So I I don't know if it would be fifty fifty or you know sixty forty or what, whatever, and and then 
I'm, I'm curious, you know, qu quite frankly, I don't know where I'm going to be in three or five years time, but I, I think there will be potentially a transition of, of, of offering, you know, may maybe coaching and, um, you know, therapy as some kind of, I don't want to say combined course, but there, mm. there, there, there might be, there might be things I can, I can offer to corporates as well in terms of, you know, maybe I don't want to use the word well being, but you know, there, there, there will be elements. Um, I, I spoke to someone um, early on this week, actually, who, who offers kind of mentoring to, to executives and um, having an element in there from, from a counseling perspective as well. And, and I think that there will be a need for corporates to have that, but let's see what the future holds. So, so maybe I need to come back in, in six or 12 months time and, and, and give you an update. Absolutely. Um, let us know how we're going, how you're going. Yeah. Part two. <laughs> yeah. I, I always, I mean, we're sort of coming to the end, but I always ask uh, people whether yeah. they have a particular bit of life advice. I mean, you've spoken to lots of successful people and been very successful yeah. yourself. And um, Thank you. well, do you have anything in particular that you would say to people? There, there are always lots of things. Um, I mean, we talked about self-care already. I think self-care is, is so important. Um, you know, t taking time for yourself. I think that's that's something which is part of self-care. But it's I don't even think it's a it's a man or women thing. I think it's just a general person thing, right? When when you're busy mm -hmm. with your job, you're busy with your family. We often forget to just take I don't know half day off and just what what I like to do. I like to go down to to Lansing Beach or, or Shoreham Beach. Just go for a half half day walk, essentially. You know, maybe finish right. with a nice lunch, or yeah, you know, or just 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 taking some time off to think. And I don't think we 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 do that enough, right? Because we're in this red race. You know, no, no matter which which profession you're in, right? Um, we we too often just just get caught up in our every day and day, and just just taking these deliberate breaks, which you know I started to do more often, but uh, yeah, I, I think I, I I can still do this more often. But that's that's probably a piece of advice that I'd like to give. Mm. Because I, I suppose there's always that. that uh, I mean, it's true of all human beings now, isn't it? But there has been a particular theme with men, perhaps historically as well, which is trying to balance that material wealth with emotional well-being and uh, mental health, which I'm not sure the balance has been struck brilliantly yeah. generally for people. But um, the things you're describing and also the career that you're well, that you're already in at the moment, but uh, ought to be able to help with that, I think. Yeah, no, absolutely. Mm. Thank you so much uh, for you. that. That's been amazing. I really appreciate it. Um, we'll put links to your cool. to the podcast and any other socials that you want uh, below this. But uh, right. thanks again. It's been really interesting for people, I think. And uh, yeah, if anybody wants to make any comments, please do below the uh, video. And um, you take care. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Okay.